Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about partial fractions and we're going to talk about how to deal with quadratic factors. So this is just a little reminder on how to set up the, the decomposition of partial fractions. So the first thing to always look for is if the fraction is um, improper, meaning the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. So if that's so, you have to um, use long division, and then you're just going to use the remainder, which will be a fraction, to complete the following steps. Now if it's not improper, you skip straight to step two, which is to factor the denominator. And that's when you start to write it in the form of decomposition. So remember, the things to watch out for are repeated linear factors, which we talked about in the previous video, and then also quadratic factors, which have a different setup, which we're going to talk about today. And we're also going to talk about repeated quadratic factors. So let's have a look at this problem. So here you can see that our fraction is not improper, so we can continue on to step two. So when I factor this denominator, here's my numerator, you can see that we end up with x times x squared plus four. So I can no longer factor um, anything, it's completely factored, and here we have a quadratic factor. So the setup for this is slightly different. Um, x is a linear factor, so that's just a normal setup. It gets its own fraction, and we call it a. Now, each quadratic factor gets its own fraction as well, but the numerator is actually going to be a binomial, so it's always going to be in the form of bx plus c. So it's going to have an x term and a constant. So you can see that although we only have two fractions, we still have three um, variables that we need to solve for. Now from here, we're still going to continue on in the same general way that we did uh, with linear factors. So we're going to multiply by the LCD. So we're going to multiply both sides of our equation by x times x squared plus 4. So when we do that, here we end up with 3x squared plus 4x plus 4 because the denominator is the LCD. Here we end up with a times x squared plus 4 because the x's canceled each other out. And then for our second term, we end up with bx plus c times x because the x squared plus 4 terms canceled out. So we're going to take a slightly different approach to solving these types of equations. So what we did previously was we started substituting convenient values um, to eliminate some of our terms, allowing us to solve for others. But for this one, our general strategy is to create a quadratic equation that is equal to a quadratic equation and then um, match up the different terms to create our um, system of equations. So what I'm so the the left side of our equation is going to stay the same. And here I'm going to um, distribute. So ax squared plus 4a plus bx squared plus cx. And then I'm going to group these in descending order. So I'm going to put my x squared terms first, ax squared plus bx squared, and then our x term next, which is cx, and then our constant term last. And then I'm also going to try to group these two um, together by factoring out x squared, essentially. So a plus b times x squared plus c times x plus 4a. So now I see that I have a quadratic equation equal to quadratic equation. And if they're equal, all of the parts should be equal. So the coefficients of a should be equal to each other. The coefficients of x should be equal to each other. And our constants should be equal to each other. So now we can create our system. So our first equation will be a plus b equals 3. So we set the coefficients of x squared equal to each other. Then we should have c equals 4. We set the coefficients of x equal to each other. And then we set our constants equal to each other. So you can see that right off the bat, we already know what c is. Here we can solve for a. a equals 1. And then we can substitute our a value up top to find b. So 1 plus b equals 3, b equals 2. 
So now we have solved for a, b, and c. So you can see it's a slightly different approach. We're trying to create two equations that are equal, and then we're going to set the different parts equal to each other. And now all I need to go back and do is substitute my a, b, and c values into the decomposed fractions. So we have 1 over x plus 2x plus 4 over x squared plus 4. And we are all done. Okay, go ahead and pause the video and give this problem a try. Okay, so check the setup um, of your decomposition of fractions, and then we're going to multiply by the LCD, and then we are going to distribute and combine like terms so we can set the different parts of our quadratic equation equal to each other. So notice that this left-hand side doesn't have a C term, which is why, or an X term, which is why C is equal to zero. So we have A plus B equals two, Z equals zero, and A equals negative five, and we can substitute to find for, uh, to solve for B. So here's our answer. <clears throat> so now we're going to put together what we know about quadratic factors and what we know about repeated factors, and we're going to try um, a little bit more of a complex problem. So you can see here um, that our denominator is already factored. And remember, I know it looks like this might be an improper fraction, but remember the degree of our denominator is actually 4. So this actually is not an improper fraction. So um, here... We are going to have a term for x squared plus 2, and we're going to have a term for x squared plus 2 squared. So this is how we treat repeated factors, but then we also have to take into account that they are both quadratic factors. So this one's going to be ax plus b, and this is going to be cx plus d. So you can see for this type of problem, we kind of had to use a fusion of our two different rules. We had to use this setup for the repeated factors, and we had to use this setup for the quadratic factors. But from here, we're going to use the same approach as the last problem. So we're going to start by multiplying both sides by the LCD, which is x squared plus 2 squared. So the left-hand side just becomes 8x cubed plus 13x, and the right-hand side becomes ax plus b times x squared plus 2 plus cx plus d, because this fraction actually has a denominator that is the LCD. So now um, we're going to try to put this side in descending order, which means we do need to multiply it out. So make sure you um, actually multiply out these two binomials. So we get ax cubed plus bx squared plus 2ax plus 2b, and then we have plus cx plus d. So you can see here I multiplied x squared to both terms, and I multiplied 2 to both terms. And now we're going to try to group together um, our similar terms on the right-hand side. So there's only one x cubed term. There's only one x squared term. You can see that we have two x terms, so we're going to group those together. So 2a plus cx. And we actually have two parts that would be our constant. So although um, it doesn't mathematically make a difference to have parentheses here, I am going to group them together just to remind us that, that is, this is the area that represents our constant. So now we're going to match up the different parts on the left and right. So I can match up the x uh, cubed terms. We can match up the x terms, which means that the um, these values are going to equal 0. So we can say a equals 8. We can say b equals 0 because there's no x squared term on the left-hand side. We can say 2a plus c equals 13. And we could say 2b plus d equals 0 because there's no constant on the left-hand side. So we have already solved for a and b. So we can do a little substitution here to solve for c. Plus c equals 13. So c is going to equal negative 3. 
and then we could do a little more substitution. Uh, we know what b is, so we can solve for, for d. So 2 times 0 plus d equals 0, so d is also equal to 0. So now we have found all four of our, um, of our variables. So now we just go back and substitute it into our decomposition. So we end up with 8x, remember b is 0, so over x squared plus 2, plus negative 3x, because d is 0, over x squared plus 2 squared. And we're all done. All right, go ahead and pause the video and give this problem a try. Okay, so first check the setup of your decomposition form. Um, remember, you have one fraction for x squared plus 4, one fraction for x squared plus 4 squared, and both of your numerators need to be binomial. So you have ax plus b and cx plus d. So you multiply both sides by the LCD, uh, foil it out and combine like terms, and then you can create your four equations. A equals 1, B equals 3, 4A plus C equals negative 2, and 4B plus D equals 7. Do a little substitution and you can solve for C and D. Okay, this last problem is a challenge problem because we have repeated linear and repeated quadratic. Um, but go ahead and pause the video and see if you can give this problem a try. Okay. So the first thing I want you to do is check the setup. Um, so we have AX plus B over X squared plus CX plus D over X squared plus 1, plus EX plus F over X squared plus 1 squared. So remember, both of these are repeated. So you have a fraction for X, a fraction for X squared, and then a fraction for X squared plus 1, and a fraction for X squared plus 1 squared. These are linear, so it's just A and B. These are quadratic, so your numerators are binomials. So from there, multiply both sides by the LCD, and then you do need to start multiplying it out, which can be a little bit cumbersome, like you need to multiply out this binomial, you need to multiply out this binomial. Here you have a monomial times a binomial, and then look, binomial times binomial. So there's definitely a lot of possibilities for small mistakes here. So go through and check each line. So I multiplied everything out completely up till this point, and then I started grouping together the terms. So you could see here, I've grouped together my x to the fourth or x to the fifth, x to the fourth, x cubed, so on and so forth. So make sure you're checking this line. And once you have that, you can set up what you know. So that we know that a is equal to 1, because that's the coefficients of x, and we know that b is equal to 5, because that's the um, constant. And that means that all of the other coefficients are going to equal 0. So 2b plus d plus f will equal 0. 2a plus c plus e will equal 0. b plus d will equal 0. And a plus c will equal 0. And then you kind of start um, from the bottom, you start substituting. So if we know a, we can solve for c. If we know b, we can solve for d. And then so on and so forth to allow you to solve for e and f. And this should be your final answer. So this is definitely a more challenging problem, and um, it's a little bit lengthier, but it should be something that um, you should be able to do given enough time. All right, that is all for today. Thank you for watching.